All right, welcome back to a show that hasn't been seen for a bit, but it's also the original podcast show that started this whole adventure. Back on January 9th, 2018, that is a long, long time ago in the scope of life. We are in 2022 now, and back in the day, that was my in the midst of my college experience. The first episode was titled Almost Student Teachers, and it's where a bunch of us who are going to college together to be teachers uh, got together and had a conversation. But back on January 9th, 2018, four years ago, well, four plus years ago now, this podcast adventure and all of it that has been since continu- began and has continued. And I felt it was important to return to the foundation show, to the I don't want to, I don't know if you want to call it the Flagstaff show or the whatever you want to call it, but this is a delayed teacher and I have a goal. My fingers are crossed on this one that I'm going to do a daily podcast. It won't be a long one, maybe five to 10 minutes, but I will basically either talk about stuff I'm learning as a teacher or talk about stuff I'm teaching, or I might just pull a poet, pull a poetry. (laughs) I can speak very good, apparently on a podcast that I've been doing for four years. I would pull up a poem and talk about it or talk pull some lyrics and just kind of do a lesson mini lesson or something about exploring the uniqueness of words and the power of words it's basically going to be i'm going to shake a magic eight ball and and we'll see what we come up with on a daily basis but for now put all hands and feet inside the ride at all times please take your seats take out your notebooks take out your headphones and welcome to a delayed teacher podcast class is now in session Welcome back to the podcast. My name is Aaron, and I am the I am the a delayed teacher <laughs> of this podcast. So today I wanted to talk about something that we're doing with curriculum in my building. Um, I am the language arts teacher at an alternative education campus here in Fort Morgan, Colorado, and I am the only language arts teacher because we have about forty to forty five upwards of sometimes I think fifty students is our limit. We, we have, we don't have a lot of teachers who, we just have one subject for each. We have social studies, we have science, we have, like, there is no other teacher, no other English arts, English, English arts, <laughs> man, it's hard to be back on your own doing a solo, a solo recording without someone to bounce stuff off of and correct you when you say things in the wrong way or grammatically or grammatar, however you say that word. <laughs> if you're taking notes, we're not, we're not doing so well on the, on the pronunciation, pronunciation game here. My point is this, is, is that I, I have created and crafted um, a good portion of our curriculum over the last um, two years. This is my third year here in the building. And as a part of that, we've done a lot of kind of, I don't want to say the word is reinvention. But we've done a lot of remodeling in how we teach and what we teach. And language arts is the big granddaddy of them all, at least here in Colorado. There are eight credits that a a high school student has to earn in language arts credits uh, and that includes his his or her four full years of language arts freshman sophomore junior and senior year of of freshman comp or what you're going to call it or sophomore comp whatever however you want to phrase it but in addition they have language arts electives that they can then select from as well so there's a there's a lot riding on the language arts world for our students and language arts is not the easiest thing in the world to do because it involves a lot of A, reading, and B, writing. <laughs> and it's a challenge because it's so, and it's not like, it's not like, it's not like, it's not the fault of English or language arts. This is just the nature of the thing that both of those tasks require a lot of brain power and a lot of focus and a lot of work to get them tuned up and to the standard 
by which the state of Colorado r- requires for graduation. There are state standards in every state you go to. Colorado recently revised theirs to the 2022 standards, I think, or 2021 or 2020 standards, I believe. They, re- they re- revamped and refreshed them once more because it's always a matter of making sure that we're doing the best we can to prepare our students for their future. The point of the matter is, is, is that the language arts standards for each grade, for me, is about 10 pages long. Uh, it's a lot. <laughs> they have to do essays, oral presentations, and there are varying amounts of specific language and requirements that play into the the standards for the state of Colorado and what, as a language arts teacher, I have to then design, adapt, or use prepackaged curriculum to then make those standards come to life. So the challenge for me over the last couple of years has been to re- refresh that curriculum reorient it, remodel it, re- whatever you're going to call it, to the place where we are now. And one of those is freshman year. Freshman year is traditionally when you do Romeo and Juliet. It's, it's the common thing across all borders. When I, was going to, when I was going to university, going to college for my, for my degree, there was a lot of, this is what you do in your freshman year. You study Le- Romeo and Juliet. And, but there were a lot of ideas like, hey, here's how you can do it differently. Here's how you can kind of make it fresh, relevant, etc. And so for the first couple of years, first two years, we did primarily Romeo and Juliet. And it was, we mixed in Warm Bodies by Isaac Marion. And in the in, over the summer, we had a lot of kind of contemplations of, all right, is Romeo and Juliet? Because they get Romeo and Juliet, they also then get Othello later on, and then they have a choice of Macbeth as well down the road. And so we kind of rethunk, rethunk, rethought what we were doing with the freshman stuff. And so to that end, this, like in the last month, I went through and we reworked freshman comp, as you would call it. And so it now primarily focuses on Warm Bodies. Now, Warm Bodies, if you're not familiar, is a book by Isaac Marion. And it was loosely based on the Romeo and Juliet kind of subject idea. R is Romeo, he's the zombie, and Julie, is Juliet. She's the human. And there is the Romeo and Juliet comparison between the two families. The humans and the zombies are the two families. Now, there isn't a lot of copy and paste, which is what I do appreciate about Isaac Marion's work, is that it isn't an exact replica. It's not like, here's where this happens, and here's where this happens, and you can draw the parallels pretty straightforward. It's not that. There is enough inventiveness and creative license that Isaac Marion took that there's still elements. So what we've done is we've taken the Warm Bodies and made that our book study, our our freshman book, but we've also then have, okay, in the balcony scene, in Warm Bodies, here's where it is in Romeo and Juliet. Hey, here's the scene as represented in media. So we have the different movie clips of the balcony scene represented as well. And then there is actually a, a graphic novel based by Gareth Hines that is also a way that we can represent, okay, here's how they would have staged it or whatever. And so we use the different productions and different pieces and parcels of Romeo and Juliet and Warm Bodies in certain parts. And so there's the balcony scene. There's also a fight scene in in Warm Bodies where um, M, which could also stand for Mercutio if you really want to go crazy, um, defends R R and Julie from the bonies, from the bad, evil, like really super undead dudes. And so in that scene we did... I, we, we pulled out, okay, here's where the battle or the fight happens, and here's kind of the, the connective tissue, <laughs> no pun intended, and then here's what, what do you think of what you're seeing in the Romeo and Juliet stuff versus what you're seeing in Warm Bodies. And so trying to draw parallels between the two, um, and they're not exact, which is, I think, the beautiful part of this whole thing because you don't have, okay, well, this is exactly what it is. It's just like, well, here's a scene of conflict, of fighting, What's the difference? What's the similarities? Compare and contrast it, et cetera, et cetera. And then they also then interact and engage with the classical Shakespearean um, context, language, and, and story, while also looking at something that is more in the modern sense and more in a in a more relevant kind of content. Uh, there also is a movie um, that was made. The movie's okay. Uh, it's the book is far superior, of course. It usually always is because in the book we are literally riding along inside R's head. Um, and this is kind of a, a moment where I want to take a step out of the book and talk a little bit about Isaac Marion. Um, I, I've followed, the, followed him on Twitter, and I just recently kind of rediscovered him. Uh, in case you didn't know, the Warm Body se- book is actually a series. 
it's a four book series. There's the prequel, there's Warm Bodies, um, and there's two more books after that. And what's interesting is the last book in the series is called The Living, and it has been discontinued. And not by, not because it's been discontinued by the publishing company, but because Isaac Marion self-published the thing, which is a whole story on its own. And someday in, on this podcast, I might actually pull that in and have a conversation because I'm a writer as well, and, and I'm aspiring. I'm going to be published, fingers crossed, within the next year or less. But his, his story of, of that struggle of getting that last book out um, and he now, his life has taken on a different kind of path. And it's, it's, it's interesting and also kind of heartbreaking in, in a lot of ways. If you're curious, um, you can look him up on Instagram and, and Twitter and you can see, you can go to his website and he talks about it's been discontinued and, and kind of where he's at and his blog entries talk about kind of the process of, of what it went through. I really enjoy the guy's writing. I think he's, he's pretty cool. I think he's, his, you know, Warm Bodies is a brilliant book. And so we use Warm Bodies as a conversation piece to compare and contrast between Romeo and Juliet. However, what we also do is we take apart the characters and the story and the setting of Warm Bodies. And there's an interesting dynamic in Warm Bodies, which if you're as a teacher, if you're listening, it might be kind of cool to give it a whirl. I, I'm not saying you have to do it, but it's, this is what we figured out. Is within Warm Bodies, the subject and context of ours of the of the rules of the zombies is ours transformation which begins to happen in the first couple of chapters things start to go really weird um the, he starts to change he starts to be able to speak he starts to be able to feel and remember and and all these things that are not supposed to happen in the zombie world and so a lot of the conversation in the book is about the change that R is bringing about and it's not just R that's changing it's the zombies around him it's the zombies in the area that are starting to change and it's a very cool conversation to discuss how are they changing, why are they changing, and can people truly change, and can those changes be effective and long-lasting. And those are deeper conversations within the student's kind of life and world and influence where you can pull in different pieces and parcels of the fictional and non-fiction world when it comes to that deeper conversation. The other conversation that you can have within the Warm Bodies book is that the bonies are like the zombies, but they're the dead. They're really, really super dead. And they're almost kind of like, I don't want to say like the gods of the zombie world, but they are like the archangels or something. And in the end of the book, there's a moment where Julie's father, General Grigo, is revealed to be mostly dead and becomes a bony almost. And it's th what, what, what that conversation has spawned in the assignments for the unit that I've got is a conversation of emptiness as a disease. And we haven't, this was before, this was kind of in the midst of COVID, before kind of after post-COVID. And so I, I really haven't explored the COVID connection to loneliness um, and, and how that how that has felt because I, I didn't want to get too close to the bone, again, no pun intended, with any of the zombie kind of conversation. But I think beyond just beyond separate from the COVID conversation, the emptiness and loneliness is a disease as we look at where we are at with our connective t connectivity between phones, email, Twitter, Instagram, all the ways that we connect to each other, Facebook, is our lack of connection darker and deeper and, and more dangerous than we imagine sometimes? And I don't have an answer. I'm not going to try and answer that question on this podcast. But it's just been very cool to kind of dig into warm bodies and to see the multiple layers of thematic elements that are available to dig into and to look into and to uh, ask, talk about and engage with both a student and teacher. So I, I may actually kind of revisit some of what we've talked, what we talk about in the book series, um, in within the assignments and talk about the essays that we do for the for the book and stuff, because uh, I think it's important to talk about stuff that we do because teachers. We like we're the best at what we do, uh, but then when we are able to like share that with somebody, they're like, "Oh my gosh, I never thought about that," or "Oh, that's really cool. I like that." So this is just me kind of being a teacher and talking about what I do and what I love to do, and I love to dig into elements. I love to dig into theme. I love to dig into symbolism, and there is plenty of that in Warm Bodies. There is a lot of issues that you can you can talk about. Um, Julie's father becomes very authoritarian and becomes almost very detached from his daughter. Um, Julie's mom wandered away from camp and, and presumably died. And, and there's a there's a there's a unexplained kind of resolution that, that doesn't get explained in that first book. And there is just that theme of unexplained and unanswered 
loss. Like there's no, we don't know the reason. We just were left to mourn an empty space. There wasn't even a body found. It was just, they had her clothes and she just never came back. And so they had to imagine that she died. And so there's some depth in that conversation about, you know, Julie's, why she does what she does. And um, there's even deeper conversations about why she trusts R early on and why she sticks with him, why she doesn't just run. And there's a lot of cool stuff there. So if you're interested, you should definitely check out Warm Bodies by Isaac Marion. It's a whole series. There's a prequel, then there's Warm Bodies, and then there's the sequel, two other books there. I probably will talk about those down the road here on this podcast because I'm all about talking about books and reading. And my goal here is to also challenge myself to do more reading because as a teacher, I haven't been reading a lot and I need to step up my game. So that's kind of what the podcast is going to be. It's going to be maybe 15 minutes tops, maybe 20 minutes if that. I don't want to talk for a long time. Your time is precious, and I want to make sure that I honor that as a listener um, so that you're not having to listen to an hour long of me just babbling on about all the amazing literature we're reading and all the cool essays we're writing, which, you know, it's fun, but you want to you want to know the, the fast and the easy and, and then get out and do what you got to do with the rest of your life. So that's kind of the podcast. Uh, so today's episode will go up. Um, in the morning and my goal is to have it up every morning by like 6 a.m it'll settle set the schedule so if you're listening to this there's another episode coming tomorrow so feel free to check us out um, our website is create at morgan.org i'm on twitter at a delayed teacher our twitter is create at morgan we have a lot of cool stuff still to come there's a lot of episodes a lot more content coming and a lot more opportunities for our students to produce podcasts as well i, I i'm looking to create more multimedia and digital media pr- um, stuff from them so hopefully you will continue to enjoy that. Check out the other podcasts in on our show, um, createatmorgan.org, and there's a link to the Create at Morgan podcast, and you can like select the podcast to find them grouped and all that kind of cool stuff. So thanks for listening. Um, you are classes dismissed, and I will see you tomorrow.